the Heathkit AR-15 is now done, or as I like to call it, the coolest looking pain in my butt, because this unit took an inordinate amount of time to service. The only reason I spent so much time on it is I kind of felt sorry for the owner. Um, he dumped quite a bit of money into the uh, diagnostics and he was kind of a broke college kid, so I was like, all right, whatever. I've got a little bit of spare time, and I kind of think it looks cool, so I thought it'd look cool on YouTube, so I spent way too much time repairing this thing. It got about 300 bucks worth of service for 150 I probably shouldn't have done that, but oh well. You don't win them all. Anyway, what makes this thing so difficult to service is actually the preamp. It's sandwiched in between the main unit and the front panel. And it does look like I've got a bunch of old caps here, but they're actually new new old stock tantalums that I had laying around. So, it's actually a, quite an upgrade. I, I do have a couple of electrolytics where they were called for. Those are pretty much standard Panasonic FC type things. But to get at this, you have to remove the front panel and unstring the dial cord. It is a big deal. And even then, it, it's really tight because you can't move it all out because these wiring harnesses don't have much slack. This big filter cap here was left in place because, like a lot of things in this unit, it's a pain in the neck to remove. I just disconnected it and wired in that filter cap instead. That's held in with zip ties and silicone. It's not going anywhere at all. I've even got a little bit of heat shrink down there to keep the wires from chafing on the chassis. That will prevent the chassis from becoming live with about 80 volts D DC. The output coupling caps have been changed. Nishikon audio grade 4700 microfarad. That's in lieu of these big 4000 microfarad units. So, because they're so much smaller, a different mounting mechanism had to be devised. It's a little bodged up, but it's functional and it's not going anywhere. I've got some silicone bumpers underneath it that will keep it from moving and keep it isolated from the chassis. So, again, when you're working for really cheap, when you've gone overboard on a project, you uh, aren't exactly going to be cut, fabricating custom mounts for everything. I have not aligned the tuner, and there are two reasons why. Again, I'm way over overtime budget on this thing, and there's no manual for it that I can find, so I would kind of be only able to do a partial alignment without spending an even larger inordinate amount of time on this receiver. FM tunes in reasonably well, as does AM. The only thing that's wrong on FM is the stereo is a bit weird sounding. I suspect the uh, FM MPX section is out of alignment. The other thing that's weird is even when I switch it to FM, turn off the light here is the tuning indicator works the signal strength meter does not it always reads zero which is interesting I suspect that's actually another bad coupling cap on one of the tuner boards there are two of them needless to say since I've already invested so much time in this and he's getting such a great deal anyway I'm, I'm not going to touch it, it's just that rabbit hole goes down very deep. The other caps I changed out are under, on the underside of the unit. It's not particularly interesting, it's just a bunch of axial leaded caps on the two driver boards and on the regulated supply board. This Overall, the, the Heathkit AR-15 is just not really all that interesting except on the front panel where they've got these cool lighting effects. All your labels are actually lit and when you turn it off they ghost out I mean that is really cool and that's actually one of the reasons I went through to service this unit because I thought it was unique and I thought it would make good YouTube so and like I said I kind of felt sorry for the kid that owns it so I, I know what it's like to be a broke 20 something so I have repaired it even though I'm 
I know I'm not getting paid what this repair job is worth. And lastly, I changed out all the dead lamps behind here. It, it had lost about probably half of its lamps. Sound quality wise, it's pleasing to the ear, I'll give it that. It's got a nice fat warm tone to it, but it's definitely not what I would call really hi-fi. Um, with that said, let's hit it to auxiliary and do a distortion test. All right, what do we have here? We're testing into eight ohms. Okay, at about a watt of output. Got about 0.1%. Just barely what we would start to call high fidelity. Let's see how high this will go while still keeping 1%. Getting up there? Wow, way over. We're straight up clipping at this point. Looks like about 21 volts. So, let me grab my calculator here. Alrighty. 21 volts, what is that? Fifty-five watts. So ten percent above rated power, that's not too bad. It's rated at fifty watts. And what's nice about that is I think it was actually rated for one percent distortion, if I'm not mistaken. I'll have to go look that up again, but I do believe that was the figure. Let's see what we get at one percent distortion, which is what it's rated at. Oh, you can see how quickly it runs out of steam. Of course, all amps will do that. Once you clip, uh, there's a very fine line between clean and clipped. It's like 22 volts. So 22 squared divided by 8 ohms. 60 and a half watts. Not a bad receiver. But, uh, let's put it this way, if I knew exactly how much time I would have spent on it to get it fixed, I probably wouldn't have started it at all. This thing has been quite the bench queen, and I'm glad it's getting out of here. Even though it does look really cool. Good riddance, Heathkit AR-15. Get out of my shop.